Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. Uh, this episode is called Hinkley Point C, Oh Deary Me. But I want to start by stating very clearly that I am not opposed to nuclear power. No, no, no. Over the last 60 years, there have been hundreds of nuclear power stations all around the world that have successfully produced multiple terawatts of electricity with very, very low CO2 and a very, very high safety record. Now, this safety record is easily highlighted by the fact that there have been some major disasters. Three Mile Island in America, Chernobyl in Russia, and Fukushima in Japan. Three disasters in 60 years, while there are literally hundreds of other power stations that happily go about their business and we don't even know what they're called. Now, admittedly, those three disasters were utterly catastrophic. They were horrendous. The damage they caused to the environment and to the reputation of nuclear power is immeasurable. We shouldn't deny that, but it's still, relatively speaking, a very safe technology, particularly if you compare it to coal. Coal mining has caused tens of thousands of deaths, either through accidents or through disease for the poor people who've been down the holes digging out the coal. It's caused tens of thousands of deaths just from walking down the street breathing because the stuff that's coming out of the chimney is horrific. So I've always argued that nuclear is better than coal. But let's face it, coal is pretty shit. Now, I'd be happy having a nuclear power plant in my back garden, completely safe, but I wouldn't be so happy having a long-term nuclear waste storage facility in my back garden. In fact, not just in my back garden, in my country. In fact, to be honest, on my planet. Nuclear waste management is a constantly overlooked factor when it comes to the nuclear debate. Sellafield is the UK's big nuclear waste storage and reprocessing facility in Cumbria. It's guarded 24 hours a day by armed police, and we, the British taxpayer, pay for that. Not just this year, not just last year, but forever. As far as we can see into the future, billions and billions of pounds spent managing that waste. Now, I'm very happy that I pay for looking after that nuclear waste because if we didn't look after it, if it was just chucked around in fields, we'd have a serious problem. In the meantime, the large energy companies and the current British government want to build a new nuclear power station, one that we pay for the electricity and then we pay for all the waste management afterwards. And this is where we come to Hinkley Point C. Oh, dearie me, Hinkley Point C. How much will it cost me to make a cup of tea in 2033? That is, if they've actually built it by then, which is anyone's guess, because the whole thing's being delayed endlessly and it's a complete and utter mess. Yes, Hinkley Point C has been in the news a great deal recently, partly because of the incredible cost of building it, a cost that is only ever spiralling up. We have a government hell-bent on doling out tax breaks and incentives to oil companies, to gas companies, to coal companies, and of course to the nuclear industry, at the same time slashing all the support and subsidies for renewables. And we have a government who is hell-bent on building what is universally accepted across the political spectrum, from the pro-nuclear lobby to the anti-nuclear lobby, as quite simply the most expensive power station that has ever been built by the human race that will produce the most expensive electricity that has ever been conceived. £18 billion is the current estimate to build Hinkley Point C. But one thing we know from sure, from all the other projects of a similar nature around the world, is there's only one thing that that figure is going to do, and that is get bigger. And whatever happens, however quickly the decision is made, it won't produce one kilowatt of electricity before 2028. And that's if they start building it this year, which is looking increasingly unlikely. And when the chief financial officer of EDF, the French company behind the project, resigns because of the, and I quote, financial insanity of the project, it might be worth us taking a second look. Now, 18 billion pounds will buy around three gigawatts of electricity generated by Hinkley Point C. It's an enormous amount of electricity. It's reliable, 24 seven, round the clock, always there. It's the base load, if you like. But 18 billion pounds will also buy you 12 gigawatts of wind-powered electricity. Now, if you halve that number of wind turbines, don't spend all the 18 billion, just spend, say, 5 billion on the wind turbines and spend the rest on the rapidly emerging storage solutions that are being developed as I speak. 
and then you probably get a much better deal. Really secure energy, 24 seven, much, much cheaper, no waste to manage afterwards. Now, Hinkley Point C wouldn't be so bad if the technology that's being used had a, a, a fairly reasonable track record. Oh, dearie me, Hinkley Point C. The same design is currently being built in Finland and France. The one at Olkiloto 3 in Finland is six years behind schedule and six billion euros over budget. The French version at Flamanville is 10.5 billion euros over budget and construction costs have tripled since they started building it. Add to this list of woe the fact that the nuclear watchdog has questioned the safety of the nuclear vessel at Flamanville that is being built by Arriva Nuclear Power. And to round it all off, the big industrial consumers of electricity have stated very publicly that they would be insane to pay the strike price agreed between our government and the Chinese who own the power station and the French who are building the power station of £92.50 per megawatt hour. No one is going to buy electricity at that cost. They must be crazy, said proper businessmen. Not weird lefties who ride bikes and have placards and eat tofu. No, proper businessmen in suits with executive limousines that burn lots of petrol. Those sort of blokes say this is stupid. These big industrialists now know that they can get electricity cheaper from wind and solar because they can install that themselves and save themselves an enormous amount of money. And that is what's happening. So the most expensive nuclear power station ever built and the most expensive electricity ever produced. Well done, UK government. You can really spot a bargain. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching Fully Charged. I hope that's really cheered you up. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, join me again next week for another episode. And finally, if you have supported Fully Charged on Patreon, I am enormously grateful to you. Thank you so much. It, it makes uh, it, It's turned making this show from a you know, an interesting struggle into a, a challenging joy. It's brilliant and it's, it's made it possible for us to keep making more episodes. So if you haven't uh, uh, supported the program on Patreon, don't feel guilty. There's no pressure at all. But if you want to, the link's just down there. It's very easy. Just click the link. It takes you through to the Patreon page. It's very straightforward. Lots of people have told me how easy it is. The first time they've used Patreon and it's very simple. I've used it before. I think it's a brilliant system. And if you haven't subscribed, well, please do, as we're releasing a new show every week. And I would hate it if you were to miss some of the fully charged goodness heading your way. That's all for now. If you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>